Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Now today we continue our study of the master soul winner. That is, the Lord Jesus in action, winning souls, saving souls. And we need today to take some lessons from the master of all soul winners. Let us pray before I read. Father, as we open thy word to study again today, give us wisdom, the leadership of the Holy Spirit, unction from Almighty God, and we'll give thee the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. On yesterday, we finished John 8, that is, the story of the conversion of the woman taken in adultery. I summed it up like this. She fell into sin. She was dragged in front of a man that she feared. They demanded her stoning. In the man she feared, she found a friend, and the friend was the Lord Jesus. And the friend wrote on the ground, and she discovered that he was Lord, and so he forgave her, and he sent her home with a future. Hallelujah, what a Savior. It all happened through the writing, the writing of the Word of God on the ground with the finger of the Lord Jesus Christ. The scriptures that he wrote on the ground got rid of her accusers and saved her from the lake of fire, the power of the gospel. Hallelujah. Now then, the next conversion that we have recorded that Jesus dealt with is in John chapter 9 and verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Note, blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, you see, I, I'd like to say something right there. Today, some of you are told that you are suffering because of sin. Now, I'm not criticizing anybody, God bless you. I'm trying to help you. I'm going to preach the gospel. You can call it whatever you want to. It doesn't make any difference to me. But some of you have been told that you're suffering because of sin. And I don't doubt that some of you are. But not all sufferers, not all sufferers are suffering because of sin. The Lord Jesus plainly said that this man nor his parents had committed sin, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now, you know, God has a way of doing things, and God's ways are not our ways. And God knows best, and God does best. And so in this case... The man was born blind to the glory of God. Now, you don't understand that, neither do I. But that's not to be understood by you nor by me. God has a plan, and God's going to work out his plan. Now, I don't doubt that I'm speaking to people today who have suffered because of your sin. I'm speaking to other people who are suffering, and yet it's not because of your sin, and it's not because of anybody else's sin. But God has a plan, and God has a purpose, and God has a program, and God's going to carry it out in you and in me if we'll only let him and allow him. And so this man was born blind. Now look at verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me, while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Notice that. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. He made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes, notice now, of the blind man, which was with clay, and said, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which by interpretation is set. And he went his way, and therefore, and washed, and came seeing. Now we're going to stop right there. He went his way, and washed, and he came seeing. Now then, how did he get his sight? How did he get his sight? A little bit later, he was born again. 
He's not born again here, but just a little bit later, he's born again. Now, I don't know whether I'll get down there today or not. If I don't, I'll get there tomorrow. But now, how did this young man get his sight? Now, follow me closely. He was born blind. He was not looking for Jesus. He was not searching for the Son of God, and he didn't say, Lord, oh, Lord, won't you please open my eyes? No. Follow me closely. The Lord Jesus passed by. He saw a man. The man couldn't see Jesus. He was blind. No one brought him to Jesus. The Bible simply says the Lord Jesus saw a man. The Lord saw him. Now then, what I want you to notice is this. Sinner friend, you may not be looking for Jesus today. You may not be searching for Jesus today. But I want to say to every sinner, to every sinner man, to every sinner woman, and to every sinner boy, and every sinner girl listening to my voice, I want to say to you that even though you may not be looking for the Lamb of God. He's looking for you. He is searching. He is seeking. And he is looking for every sinner that hears my voice. And yea, the dear sinners who don't hear my voice. All right. So Jesus saw him. The boy didn't see Jesus. The boy wasn't looking for Jesus. The boy wasn't searching for Jesus. And no one brought him to Jesus. But the Lord Jesus saw him. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. How many of you people listening to my voice right now, if you walked up to the, to the curb, up to the corner, and there stood a blind man with his white cane, and there he stood with his white cane, how many of you would pass him by and refuse to help him across the street? Every person listening to my voice, every person that is a lady and a gentleman, would certainly take that blind man by the arm and lead him or help him across the street. Now then, I wonder why it is that we can see the white cane and we respect the white cane and we help the dear man and the dear woman, the dear young man and the dear young woman that walks with a white cane. But beloved, we don't see the poor spiritually blinded, lost sinners that are going to hell in the blindness of their sin, in the blindness of their iniquity. We don't see them. We pass them by. The Son of God never passed one by. He always sees. He longs. He loves. He looks for. And he seeks out the sinner. And he saves them if they'll only give him a chance. Understand, please. Get it, please. The blind boy was not seeking healing. He was not seeking his sight. He was not looking for Jesus. But praise God, Jesus was looking for him. He saw him. When Jesus passed by, verse 1, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. Born blind, if you please. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? You see, they weren't so much interested in getting his eyes open. They wanted to know who sinned. They wanted to know who sinned that he was blind. But the Son of God was interested in getting his eyes open. Now then, notice what happened, and I move on hurriedly. Jesus spat on the ground, and he made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the blind man's eyes. Nothing has happened yet. No. And he said unto him, Go. Wash in the pool of Siloam. He went his way, therefore, and washed, and came seeing. He didn't see, he could not see, and he didn't see until he washed. Now, what did he do? Here's what he did. Here's what he did. He heard the word of God. He believed the word of God. He obeyed the word of God, and his eyes were open. What did it? The Word of God. What did it, beloved? The clay didn't do it. God bless your heart. The clay didn't do it because, well, Jesus spat on the ground. He made clay. He anointed his eyes, but they didn't come open. When he anointed his eyes with clay, he said, now go to the pool of Siloam and wash. The water is the Word. In other words, John 15, 3, now ye are clean through the Word. Ephesians 5, 26, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it by the washing of the water by the Word. The word, beloved friends. He said, go, and the boy went. He said, wash, 
and the boy washed, and he came away. Therefore, therefore, he washed, and he came away, seeing. Now what opened his eyes? Obeying the word of God, hearing the word of God, believing the word of God, and obeying. Jesus said, go and wash. I'll guarantee you, if that boy had gone down the road and said, hmm, baloney, foolishness, silly, me go wash in the pool of Silo. Why, who ever heard tell of any such a thing? Washing in the pool of Silo. Why, who is that fella anyhow? What authority does he have to, to, to command and demand me to go and wash? That's what people are saying today. They're saying, who, who has a right to demand me to come up to a mourner's bench? Who has the authority to command and demand me to get on my knees and repent? I want to tell you, my friend, listen. The Bible says, except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And I'm going to tell you one thing. You'll repent somewhere. You'll repent somewhere or you'll burn in the pits of the damned. You'll pray to God and ask forgiveness either in this life or in the pits of the damned. And if you do it in hell, you'll get no forgiveness. The rich man prayed, Oh, Father, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. But he found no mercy. He had time to pray. And he said, Send Lazarus to my father's house. He had time to pray. And he had time to repent. And he had time to think. But it was too late in the lake of fire. I warn you. I warn you, my beloved friend. You'll repent somewhere. You'll repent on bended knees in this earth and hear the Lord say, well done, or you'll repent in hell and you'll never find any mercy. Now, the boy was blind. He couldn't see Jesus. He didn't feel of Jesus. He didn't say, who are you? He didn't say, are you sure? He didn't say, can you prove it? The man said, go and wash and you'll see. And praise God, he went, he washed and he saw. The Bible says, repent, believe, confess, and I'll put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Believe, repent, confess, and I'll save you. Hear the word of God, and I'll save you. Call on the Lord Jesus, I'll save you, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, and you won't believe it. Let me tell you something. Every sinner... You may be a drunkard, you may be a gambler, you may be a liar, you may be a thief, you may be a murderer, or you may be a Sunday school scholar that has never been born again. If you die and go to hell, you know why you're going? You're going because you refuse to do what the blind boy didn't refuse to do. The Lord Jesus Christ is saying to you, repent, believe the gospel for the remission of sins, Repent, believe. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, but you won't do it. You're listening to my voice, but it's going in one ear and out the other. You're hearing, and yet you're not hearing. You hear, but receive not. You hear, but believe not. You hear, but repent not. And this boy heard, he obeyed, he went, he washed, and he came seeing. And if you open your eyes in the pits of hell, it'll be simply because you refused to hear the word of God. Now, the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now, you see, this boy couldn't see Jesus. He was blind. He couldn't see his loving, tender, smiling, compassionate, tender face. But he heard him. He said, go. He heard him. Go. He heard him and he said, wash. And he heard the direction, the pool of Siloam, not the Jordan River. Oh, you say, Brother Green, I don't think it makes any difference what kind of religion a man has if he's sincere in what he has. Now, suppose this old boy said, well, well, uh, I know a pool that's closer than Siloam. Why, I can go over here to the pool at Bethesda. Why, I can just step over here to the River Jordan. Why, what's the use of me going to the pool of Siloam? Why, that's a long ways. And I don't know whether I can find it or not. And I believe I'll just go down to the River Jordan and wash. Oh, yeah, my friend. I wonder if you think the Son of God would have healed him if he had gone to the River Jordan or the pool of Bethesda or the Sea of Galilee. Listen, when the Lord Jesus said to that boy, Go to the pool of Siloam. He meant go to the pool of Siloam. 
the boy went to the pool of Siloam because Jesus told him to go to the pool of Siloam. He heard, he obeyed, he went. Now let me tell you, you must, it is absolutely imperative. It is God's must. Ye must be born again. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. So you can join the church, but that's not it. You can be baptized, but that's not it. You can be sincere, but that's not it. You say, Brother Green, if I'm sincere in what I believe, if I'm sincere in my religion, isn't my religion just as good as your religion? If I'm sincere, I want to say, my friend, your religion and my religion is no good. It makes no difference how sincere I am. It makes no difference how sincere you are. You must believe. You must receive. You must obey the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. The truth is the Word of God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. Now the Word of God said, Confess, repent, believe. As many as received him, as many as accepted him, to them, Gave ye the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born. Born, not of the will of man, not of blood, not of flesh, but born of God. God does the borning when you do the obeying. When this young man went to the pool of Siloam, stooped over, put his hand in the water, and washed his eyes, they were open. What did it? The clay? No. Did the water do it? No. What did it? Obedience. He obeyed. He heard. He went, he obeyed, he was healed. Sinner, do you know that you're on the road to hell? I didn't accuse you of being a murderer or an adulterer or a gambler, but how shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? You don't have to be a great sinner to go to hell. You just have to neglect salvation. Jesus said, repent. Have you done it? Jesus said, believe. Have you done it? Jesus said, receive. Have you done it? Jesus said, confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart. Have you done it? If you haven't, you're lost. But if you'll do it, and do it now, you can be in that number when the saints go marching in. Now, the point I want you to get today is this. The blind boy was not begging for healing. The blind boy was not seeking Jesus. Jesus was seeking the blind boy. He saw him. He saw the blind boy as he passed by. He went to him. He didn't ask him if he wanted to get healed. He just made clay. He anointed the boy's eyes, and then he gave him instructions. He said, go. The boy went. He said, go to the pool of Siloam. He went to the pool of Siloam. He said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. The boy heard. He went. He went to the appointed place. He did what the, the Lord commanded. He washed. And praise God, his blinded eyes were open. He was born that way. And he got his sight by obeying the instructions of the Lord Jesus. Now, if you're blinded by sin, and if you're on the road to hell, you can find life and forgiveness in Christ if you want it. Now, Jesus said, if we confess our sins, he forgives our sins. If we call on him, he saves us. If we come to him, he will in no wise cast us out. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Will you come? Father, save the soul that's blinded and stumbling toward the pits of hell. Oh, Lord, there's somebody right now, somebody stumbling, staggering on the very brink of hell. They're blinded. They're lost, Father. Help them to listen to Jesus as he says, Come unto me, call upon me, and I'll save you. Father, save that dear soul that's about to stumble in hell today. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen.